Hello everyone and welcome back to the new video. Today in this video we shall discuss about the concept of geoecosphere. It was given by John A. Matthews and David T. Herbert in their book Geography, a very short introduction published by the prestigious OUP that is Oxford University Press. This book is a very masterpiece book and it deals with the basic uh, concept of geographies and all what about geography subject is its physical dimensions, its human dimensions, its uh, core concepts as well as its applied part. Okay, So if you are in academics of geography, it's a must read book for everyone and you can find this book, book on Amazon, Flipkart and other e-commerce websites. So uh, switching over to the main part of the video. So before switching over to the geocosphere, we shall see a little bit of about John and Matthews and David T. Herbert. So John A. Matthews is a professor of physical geography at the University of Wales in Swansea, whereas David T. Herbert is also an emeritus professor of geography and he is an honorary fellow also at the University of Wales in Swansea. Okay. They have written a number of research papers, number of articles regarding the disciplines of physical and human geography. John A. Matthews is basically a physical geographer, whereas David T. Herbert is a human geographer. So, combinedly, they have written a number of books, a number of research articles and in different disciplines of the physical and human geography. But their most important works include Unifying Geography, Common Heritage, Shared Future that was published in 2004. And this book, The Geography, a very short introduction, is also a very important book for uh, any person who is studying geography. So basically, this is the concept of geoecosphere was incorporated in this book, Geography, a very short introduction by Matthews and Herbert. And it is a very important concept to understand. And this whole diagram of geocosphere and this whole concept of geo geocosphere describes the whole scope or the subject matter of the subject of geography. So the one who is trying to understand the scope of geography, the subject matter of geography, if he understands the concept of geoecosphere, then it, it will be very easy to understand the concept of geography and the scope of geography. In academics, if you want to write an answer or if in the exams it comes to describe the scope or the subject matter of geography, you can use this diagram of ge geocosphere. Now let's understand the basic concept of geocosphere. So the geocosphere that was uh, given by Matthews and Herbert, it consists of total seven spheres that we study in the subject of geography. So how Matthews and Herbert describe or define the term geocosphere? The narrow surface zone comprising all the landscape of the earth Okay, is helpful in defining the overall scope of physical geography can be termed as a geoecosphere. And as we know, landscape is the core concept of geography. It is a very important aspect of geographical science. And what Matthews and Herbert say that the narrow surface zone comprising all the landscape of the earth. Okay, all the landscapes are included in this. Okay, so the narrow surface zone that consists of or that comprises of the all the landscapes okay that can be termed as the geoecosphere so now starting from the upper part so the geoecosphere or this whole diagram is the diagram a okay is has three main spheres that is the atmosphere the toposphere and the lithosphere and these three spheres are the major study areas of the subject of geography here we are specifically talking about the physical geography portion okay okay so the first part is the toposphere okay toposphere is the study of earth's land surface okay so toposphere is focused in the geomorphology part of the physical geography then you move to the lithosphere lithosphere is the upper part of the earth as well as the internal rock structure or the geological structure of the earth next sphere is the, the atmosphere so atmosphere is a blanket of the earth that surrounds the air okay so the main focus of climatology is the atmosphere okay so now the question arises that are the geographers only responsible for the study of these spheres that we have studied that we have discussed here so the answer is no okay so just like lithosphere lithosphere the geologist the geochemist or the geophysicist are responsible for the detailed description and detailed analysis and study of lithosphere similarly the atmospheric scientists the meteorologists atmospheric physicists are responsible for the detailed study of the atmosphere and similarly for the other spheres also like cryosphere is a study of the frigid part of the earth's surface that is the glaciers okay 
Hydrosphere is the study of the water portion of the Earth's surface. Biosphere is the study of the biological elements that is biotic and abiotic elements and their interaction. And the, the pedosphere is the study of soil sciences that is the soil study. So moving on, we were discussing that are these spheres the only the study area of geographers? No, we had discussed, discussed it earlier also that other scientists of other disciplines are also responsible for the study of these fundamental phenomena. Okay. So the question arises, the, what is the difference between what the physical geographers study and what these specific scientists study? So as we know, geography is a spatial science and space is the most important fundamental concept or the core concept of geographical science. So physical geographers focus on the spatial patterns. Okay, the it's highlighted that spatial patterns in the landscape and their underlying dynamics from the local to regional up to global levels. Okay. So the basic concept is spatial pattern over a particular space that can be a regional level also that is the study of a locality, study of a city, study of an urban area or it can be a large scale study like a global level study that is the regional pattern of atmospheric circulations. So all these we study in physical geography also but it the most important we include in a particular space okay in a particular region. So in a nutshell, how can we define geocosphere or how can we explain geocosphere or how can we define the scope of physical geography here? So they are interlinked. Geocosphere is what defines the scope or the subject matter of physical geography. So it is not wrong to say that the study of this geocosphere is the study of physical geography or is the subject matter of physical geography. So the narrow surface zone that comprises of the atmospheric phenomenon, that comprises of cryospheric phenomenon, that comprises of the hydrospheric phenomenon, as well as the biospheric phenomenon and the pedospheric phenomenon. So this narrow band or this narrow zone or this narrow region of this whole sciences is termed as a geoecosphere. But further, if we look more into it, so we will see that Human is also a key or the fundamental part of study of the geographical subject. So basically, it is the part of the earth's surface. It is the earth's surface on which the human activity is dependent, if not wholly, but partially. All the activities are performed by the humans on this earth. Okay, so we cannot ignore the activities of humans. Okay, so the geocosphere term is clear to you. Here, a new term is coined that is the new sphere. So first we will try to understand what the term new sphere means. So if we had studied about biosphere, we know in the biosphere there are biotic components as well as abiotic components. In the biotic components, there are a number of plants, animals, humans, and it's only the ability of humans to create their own cultural and the technological landscapes on the earth's surface. The plants, the animals or the other microorganisms, they cannot create any cultural aspects or the cultural landscapes on the earth's surface. This has only been provided to the humans till date. Okay, But the most important part of the human activity is its consciousness, its mental ability or its perception. So this all comes under the term new sphere. So how can we define the new sphere? So the sphere of human mental activity is termed as or can be termed as the new sphere. So by the mental ability, by the perception processes, the human can modify the geoecosphere or he modifies the human, uh, the geoecosphere. So when he modifies the geoecosphere, he creates its cultural landscape or technological landscape or any the other cultural aspects that are created by its modifications. So the zone of overlap between the geoecosphere and the mental ability of the humans is termed as the anthrosphere or we can term it as the human induced geoecosphere. Okay. So this is the basic the connection between the physical geography and the human geography. That the physical geography is the base. Okay. And human activities are performed by the mental ability of them on this geoecosphere or this physical earth. And this overlap or this intersection between the geoecosphere or the new sphere develops a new sphere that is the human induced geoecosphere or anthrosphere. Okay. So this is essentially uh, the scope of geography. Geography which contains the two major branches that is 
the physical geography and the human geography have been described in this particular diagram by Matthews and Herbert. So the geoecosphere essentially provides the subject matter or the scope of physical geography. And this concept of anthrosphere that is the interaction between geoecosphere and the noosphere, it provides the concept of the scope of the human geography. So through a single diagrammatic representation, one can easily understand the scope or the subject matter of geography subject. So this was all about the geoecosphere that was given by uh, Matthews and Herbert and uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you with the next interesting video. Thank you for watching and Jai Hind.